Today is officially the day, everybody. PlayStation 5 launches in North America and a few other countries as well. Uh, if you are in Europe, you do have to wait a little bit longer, unfortunately. But uh, right now, we do have both models here. The digital edition has been somewhat MIA during the initial pre-release. We haven't seen too many of these, but we'll get a close-up look now. And uh, we'll set one of these up, do some quick experiments, and our coverage can officially begin here on this channel. PlayStation 5, let's get started. Of course, as we all know at this point, PS5 is quite a large machine, and uh, the same goes for its retail box, which is why it eats up most of the screen real estate for my unboxing setting. But let's start with the digital edition. This is the one that we haven't gotten to see much of, so it'll be nice to finally get a close look at this very slender, symmetric looking console. Very straightforward process here. But you do want to be a little bit careful, especially if you're somewhat of a psycho like me and like keeping the retail boxes on hand. It is interesting with this uh, all digital console that, uh, you know, it seems very desirable on the surface, but we all know that, uh, here's our dual sense. we all know this is going to be a low volume machine. Yeah, it's $400, it's a little more affordable, but Sony and Microsoft knew, at least in the initial batch of machines, that the all digital machines, whether it's Series S or PS5 for that matter, power cord, they weren't going to make a whole lot of these. Microsoft anticipates that Series S will be more popular down the line, but in terms of the early adopter phase, they both know that the disc models, and certainly more for Microsoft with that Series X machine, where it's very powerful, very beefy, people are gonna want that, at least right off the bat. There's our stand, very plasticky. Remember, it's got that rotate function, depending on orientation. We've got our HDMI 2.1 compliant cable, so keep that in mind. Don't toss this away if you've got a, you know, a bunch of HDMI cables, which I'm sure you do, most people have a lot of these laying around. Hang on to this one. It is HDMI 2.1 compliant. So whenever the time comes, most people don't have a TV ready to go for 4, 4K 120 or 8K 60, but when the time comes, you will need HDMI 2.1 compliant cables. Okay, gotta stand up for this big boy. Be very careful, by the way, placing this on its side without the stand. <clears throat> It's, I mean, the digital edition is somewhat symmetric looking, but this thing is still offset where this corner is a little bit higher than this corner. That's the whole point of the stand. That's why it's necessary for vertical and horizontal orientations, uh, especially for, again, the digital edition. For vertical, the console is very top heavy, so you're gonna want the stand for that. And then horizontal, it just, it doesn't sit flush, right? Because again, it's, it's offset. So that's what you're gonna want for this machine. And also, no uh, plastic, tape or whatever, cellophane wrap, anything over the initial uh, gloss. So enjoy this while you can for how nice it looks. This is uh, probably as nice as it's, as it's ever going to get fresh out of the box like this. As you can see in the stand, our screw is already in there. You're gonna want that. This little guy right here where your screw would go. Careful with that little plastic bit. I imagine once a used market starts for this console, you're not gonna be able to find machines that come with that anymore. What's funny is that this is a uh, flathead, and I can't even tell you how many, or how long it's been since I've needed a flathead screwdriver. So I don't actually have one on hand, I'm using a pair of tweezers. <laughs> which looks dumb, but you know it works. And there is our digital edition, PlayStation 5. Very slender, uh, very nice. Let's go for the uh, disc machine now. Maybe not as exciting. Everybody's uh, seen this console plenty of times over now at this point. Whether that's from the initial unboxing videos or the fact that most people are gonna be buying this one. Got ourselves another DualSense, that's always nice to have. For the power cable, we'll just take out this whole box. We've already seen this stuff. There we go. 
There's our disc base machine. She thick, just the way I like it. Nothing gets me going more than a good old fashioned disc drive, you know what I'm saying? But there is our PlayStation 5 disc console. Good time to bring this up, but as a little pro tip, if you haven't bought your console just yet, or if you're gonna be in the market for a PlayStation 5 down the road, make sure that the stand is included because uh, again, it's pretty much needed or certainly preferred for vertical and horizontal orientation. So when you're going for a used machine off eBay, GameStop, wherever, make sure you get the stand and make sure it's the right stand uh, because that's probably lesser known is that these stands are slightly different based on the console. So it might be a weird circumstance that you buy a used console and it doesn't come with the right stand. Just make sure that you get the right one. More of a precau precaution than anything else. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's do this one horizontal. Just make sure you got it on. Nice snug fit. And there we go. Our PlayStation 5 is now set up, setting nice and clean, and we've got two consoles ready to go. So let's fire one up. By default, of course, your uh, PlayStation 5 is going to have HDCP turned on. So if you do want to do direct capture through an external device like an Elgato or something, you're going to have to turn that off. I think I actually uh, missed the USB-C in the unboxing. Your USB-A to USB-C, which you need for your DualSense. You ready? A. We knew about the microwave beeps still being present, which is so awesome. Everyone doesn't like it, but I, I'm all about the microwave beeps. I don't know, I think it's, there's a certain charm to it that I think is so silly and fun. Which is a weird thing to say, but I don't know. I like it. There's our LEDs going through, you got the blue. Turn on the controller, there you go, English. Now I'm going to skip wireless connection because that will be one of our initial tests. We're gonna ignore the day one update, just see what's in there. And then we're also gonna try to uh, transfer over PT and See if it's at least initially playable on pre-release firmware. Enjoy that for five seconds, but then we're gonna have to update eventually and that will that'll turn PT off. Adjust HDR. So the symbols are barely visible. If you have a game disc, insert it now. We will do that later. Optimized is fine. That gives us all the features. Don't be afraid of rust mode. Some people do not put their PlayStation 4s in rest mode, but then you're stuck updating all your games manually and downloading firmware manually. There we go. We are in Astro's Playroom, Media Gallery, Game Library. Um, I think we discussed in one of the Let's Talk Playstations recently when it comes to the potential of custom themes. Really not a whole lot going on here. This is like the only time where you might see a default image outside of the initial login screen. And then also settings here, where again you get that amber with the glow in the top corner. But let's go to HDMI, turn off HDCP, and that way we'll get a nice, nice direct capture. All right, I think we should be good to go now. So system firmware fresh out of the box, we're uh, sitting on 20.011.02.00001. Interesting. Uh, settings are pretty bare bones. There's not a whole lot we can do, obviously. Uh, I think, unfortunately, fresh out of the box, you can't actually transfer over any PlayStation 4 content. It has to take on a firmware update first, which means the press had the only, they were the only ones with the opportunity to get PT running on PS5 before an additional update came to turn it off. What a shame. Not even out of the box, you have a chance to, you have a chance to use it. Well, that's a little bogus. I really thought that was our, our one way of trying PT on PS5 before you update and then it takes it away from you. That's not an option. So, our last little experiment, and I already know what happens here, but would be fun to demonstrate for those that um, 
are curious, uh, upgrading or expanding your SSD storage. So we've got a 4.0 NVMe M2 drive right here. And this is one of the drives that, uh, like three or four of the drives that we know of right now that in theory sounds like it'll work on PlayStation 5. This is the uh, Western Digital, was it 850 I believe? Called the SN850. Uh, so we've got one here, and uh, if you decide to plug this into your PlayStation 5, even though Sony's not allowing it, there is a, a little something that happens to your console. So let's see what that looks like. First off, we'll turn off the, the system. So whenever the time does come, and they do let you expand your storage, uh, well, first off, the expansion's not on the top, it's on the bottom part of the system. Uh, but just in case you want to access, say, those little dust catchers where they've got one here, one there. The top panel is pretty simple, right? You got that PlayStation logo, lift up a little bit, and it's, it really is amazing how easy these come off. It is simple. And it may feel like you're prying or you may be a little too nervous, and I get it. People do not like uh, breaking into their machine, but, oh, got a little bit of a nick there, I think, from um, actually taking it out. I'm sure that will probably happen to people over time but there's your uh there's one there's two for your dust catcher the actual ssd expansion is on the bottom though this is where you want to be a little more careful probably the best way to do this would be the other direction in this corner or left rather comes right off same deal there and there's our expansion. And sure enough, you get that little screw with the uh, little PlayStation buttons on it. I think that's so cool how they do that. I always like little Easter eggs and things like that that are hidden inside the hardware. We know uh, Series X has a little Master Chief in there. There it is. We're gonna need to take out that one little screw. And you will need this again, so hang on to it. Again, when the time comes. They are not gonna let you do this though off off the bat, so you'll see in a second what they what they do here, but you know, clips in very easy. Ours will screw in on this second to last one here. And that's the um, the benefit this time around. It's going to be expensive to expand storage when the time comes, but you know, right now for PS4 games, use an external HD or external SDD rather. But when you uh, expand internally, it really is just expanding. You're not replacing the hard drive. So like on PlayStation 3 or 4, you often had to make sure that you had the uh, the full system software saved onto an external USB drive or something like that so you can do a full system restore. You know, now that stuff won't really be a huge deal. On the flip side, now you've got a matter of if your main SSD for whatever reason goes bad, well, then the whole console goes bad because it's uh, soldered onto the board. And this time around, we are going to get a not so friendly message. A module is inserted in the expansion slot, turn off the PS5, remove the module, and then turn PS5 back on. Your PS5 will shut down in 30 seconds, counting down. It does not like it, so don't even try to do it. Even if you have a drive that has a read speed of 7,000 megabytes, don't do it. Sony has uh, completely disabled the future, so you are going to want to hold off for now, which is fine. Again, the benefit here is if you're moving over PS4 content, and a lot of people will be, use an external hard drive or an SDD. You still get a vast boost performance over, say, playing the games natively on PlayStation 4. And you can set it so that games will, PS4 games will install right to the uh, external. So you can save that precious 667 some odd internal SSD storage. Okay, that's um, that's about all we can do really for this video. I tried to make it a little more exciting since we've already seen a few unboxings now at this point. 
But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. We will be doing more PlayStation 5 coverage, a lot of good stuff coming. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Grind. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.